Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. This is my empty coffee cup gag. Because I've done this so many times that <laughs> I finished the coffee cup. Anyway, well the coffee and the coffee cup. Anyways guys, Ryzen 5000. Your sub box is filled with videos featuring all of these new CPUs, but as usual, We've done it a little bit different. We built a system, a gaming PC with the 5950X and we benchmarked this system as it is to give you guys an understanding of the performance of these new CPUs in real world applications like obviously our regular suite of gaming benchmarks. So without further ado, roll that intro and then let's build it. This video in particular is not a super technical CPU video for people who won't understand most of the numbers. This video is basically for people who want to know how this system performs with this new CPU and this GPU combo because we have a, a more technical in-depth look at these CPUs. It's coming a little bit later and the reason why we decided to do it this way is because all the information you're seeing right now in your sub box is going to answer some of your questions but obviously because it's us we're going to be doing a full video about Linux versus Windows benchmarking with kernel compilation and all that stuff at a later date. So sometime next week, just uh, to let the hype die down a bit so we can get a bit of a clearer mind and a bit of better focus on doing that content. But for now, let's put together this beast.
All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build section of this video. Now there's chapters in all of our videos, so you can skip to any section anytime you like to view any part of any of our videos, but it's time to put this thing through its paces and show you guys some benchmarks. What we did with these benchmarks is we actually split them into two segments. First of all, we did some pre-testing with the ASRock X570 Tai Chi with both the 5900X and the 5950X. Obviously, you can see the specs of our testing equipment right here. But yeah, I, I thought that I, I would actually share this with you guys because this is from another video that we're actually working on. But I, I figured that, you know what, I would share the Cinebench results because it would make sense just to really show you how these CPUs perform with synthetic workloads at launch so we don't miss sharing that information with you. The first thing you're noticing is both the 5950X and the 5900X are absolutely trouncing Intel's top offering, the i9-10900K. And this is kind of the trend for the rest of the Cinebench tests. These new CPUs, although they do have more cores for the multi-threaded stuff, are actually overall just faster CPUs. Quite obviously in the multi-threaded benchmarks, we're seeing a higher score. That's because like I mentioned, these CPUs do have more cores and more threads. So it does make sense that the score is higher. But again, in R20 with the single core, <laughs> you're seeing that again, the trend is these new CPUs are faster with their single core performance. I'm going to be discussing IPC and the uplifts and everything in another video, but like I mentioned, I just wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of what we found with our testing, just so we don't miss out on any information. And here's another little thing that I discovered as well, and I'm going to talk about this in the full video that we do about this. The 5950X, I saw hit a maximum single core speed of 4.96 gigahertz. And I took this photo on my phone just as a bit of a reference. So when I go back and when I'm writing a script, I, I could have a bit of a record of what I found. And I thought I would just share this with you because this is basically five gigahertz. And for an AMD CPU to hit five gigahertz like this, even on a single core is very impressive. All right, this is the testing hardware that we typically use for our GPU benchmarking videos. Obviously, it's quite different to the system that we built in this video, but I did want to share this with you guys just to clear up any confusion. So any GPUs that don't list the CPU are tested with this exact configuration. Anyways, let's take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider and with the Aorus Extreme RTX 3080, we're seeing that the performance between the 5950X and the 10900K, yeah, I mean, Look, look at the numbers. The numbers are basically telling you everything you need to know. It absolutely demolishes the 10900K with the same GPU. At 1440p, we're seeing that gap also be retained as this benchmark is still CPU bound. And I did mention this in the other video that we released at this time of this video going live as well. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark is typically biased towards Intel CPUs and we're seeing the complete opposite here with the 5950X. As we jump into 4K, we see that gap and that margin get quite a bit tighter as this 4K benchmark is very GPU bound, which is like most other 4K benchmarks as well. With superposition at 1080p extreme, we're seeing that the benchmark is basically the same considering the 1080p extreme benchmark is highly GPU bound. But when we jump over to 1440p custom, we're seeing the 5950X take a lead once again. It's a true testament to these new Zen 3 CPUs. And lastly, at 4K, we're seeing about the same results with superposition as well. Nothing too surprising here, because once again, this is GPU bound. Now here's something quite interesting. Basemark is always being biased towards Intel CPUs. And this is also being echoed here with the 5950X and the Aorus Extreme RTX 3080. It does not perform as well as the 10900K. At 1440p, we're seeing that gap become quite a bit tighter, which is actually quite interesting because as we jump on over to 4K, we're seeing the benchmark become GPU bound once more. And the differences are zero, they reported the same frame rate. And just another thing I wanted to mention, and I did mention this elsewhere in this video, that we are using that 450 watt BIOS on the Aorus Extreme, and we're not seeing any performance differences at all with testing with and without that BIOS. Now, would you have a look at that, guys? Um, yeah. 
pretty impressive stuff from the 5950X, especially at 1080p. Obviously, it's more CPU bound. And actually, 1440p was quite surprising too. That's becoming more CPU bound as times go on with the change in GPU architectures. Hopefully, we get to see a little bit more of the differences when the Radeon 6000 cards come out and we can see what these two paired together are going to do. But for now, obviously, we don't have those cards. We don't have that information, so we can't share that with you as of this video going live. Obviously, this will make this part of the video quite redundant quite quickly, but it is interesting to see AMD, especially in Cinebench, coming out on top. And even with the single core performance, which is very, very interesting. Now, the, my, my kind of conclusion with these new AMD CPUs are, and I said this in the other build video that we did as well, is yes, AMD does have the fastest gaming CPU like on the market right now, since the launch of Ryzen 5000, but only in some instances, not in every instance, but in most of them, yeah, we'll, we'll give it to them, we'll give it to them. And I know we're probably gonna get questions about why we don't have the 5600X and the 5800X, like some other videos you're probably seeing in your sub box right now. We don't have them yet, we do have them coming, so you can expect to see some content with that in the next few weeks time. Hopefully, right around the time that Radeon 6000 comes out, because we can then put it all together and you know pour it into the pot and stir it up and make it all happen. But yes, I'm actually quite excited uh, to see performance like this, especially at the lower resolutions. I mean like 1440p for instance, because for me personally, that's where I game. That's where I'm personally gonna get the biggest performance increase. And I'm gonna say it, a lot of people game at 1440p now and to get that little bit extra performance is, uh, it's significant enough to for it to warrant it being the fastest gaming CPU on the market right now. But again, take it with a grain of salt. In most instances, or rather some instances, it's that way. Anyways, this wouldn't be a Gear Seekers video if we didn't chat about the parts because, yeah, that's what we're here to do as well. The CPU is the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X. It's the brand new top tier Ducksnut 16 core 32 threaded gaming and content creation monster. We will be covering content creation at a later date with the CPU. So yeah, we're not forgetting about you. We're just not doing it right now because we want to do something different for launch. We whacked that 5950X on the Aorus X570 Extreme. It's one of the most overkill X570 boards on the market. And yeah, we thought it would pair quite well together with this combination. To cool the 5950X, we used the NZXT Kraken Z73. The reason why I picked this cooler is purely for aesthetic reasons, like we, we did our last build in this case, which actually has quite similar hardware. I, I, didn't, I didn't really think about it, it was like subconscious, but it uses the same motherboard and the same RAM in the last time we built it. Anyway, uh, yeah, speaking of the RAM, it is 32 gigs of Corsair dominated platinum RGB. I just like how this RAM suits the build. A lot of the choices of this were aesthetic as well. The GPU is the Aorus Extreme 3080 with the 450 watt BIOS on it. Yes, I did do that for our initial video as well. I just didn't think it was worth mentioning because it didn't give us any extra performance when we tested it. We're gonna get questions about the GPU support bracket holding up the 3080 Extreme. It's an Aorus one from a 2080 Ti that I had. And the they have new GPU support brackets, but it didn't quite work with this build in this situation just because of the case and the layout and whatnot. But I think you can buy these GPU support brackets on eBay now. People have been telling me, so yeah, go check out eBay if you wanna grab one of them. But as usual with our build videos, all of the parts will be on the PC part picker list down below in the description so you can peruse that, see how much everything costs, if you can actually buy it. And that's the other thing with these new CPUs, we've got no idea about availability, whether or not you're even gonna be able to buy them at launch. But just remember, when the 3700X and the 3800X and all the new like Zen 2 chips came out, availability was pretty scarce too. But I think uh, people, yeah, very, very short memories. Alrighty, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music that's available on our Patreon. There is a link to that down below. Our videos are also available on Floatplane. Yeah, we've been on Floatplane for a, coming up to a year now. So yeah, we're one of the longest Floatplaners on the platform and you can watch this video over there as well in higher quality because Floatplane looks absolutely excellent over there with all of their cool video compression and not so compression technology. Anyways guys, uh, yeah, if you liked it, hit the like button. If you hate it, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers.
you peak, we seek. And to round off our initial coverage of these CPUs, yes, we released two videos because we are absolutely insane and we hate life and we actually hate sleep as well. Um, I think it's very, very interesting for these new CPUs. It's, they're beginning to show the weaknesses with Intel's architecture, well, the weaknesses in Intel's architecture and I'm keen for Zen 4 <laughs> because if this is anything to go by, can you imagine what's going to happen next? Uh, if Intel doesn't do something uh, interesting with Rocket Lake, they're in for a world of trouble. Thanks for watching.